Hi everyone, my name's Helen and welcome back to my channel where I'm on a mission to spread the word of science through the art of makeup. On this channel, I use my background as a chemist to test and review makeup and then let you guys know what I find. So, in my last video, I took the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette into the lab with me and tested the pigmentation and compared it to the Makeup Revolution Reloaded Iconic Vitality palette. Now, if you want to know what I found when comparing these two palettes, I'll link the video probably up here and down below. Today, I'm going to continue the theme and carry on looking at the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. But instead of comparing it to this guy, like I did in my last video, I'm going to look at the Wet n Wild Rose in the Air palette. Now, the results that I found in the lab were slightly different. And so if you want to know which one of these two palettes is a better dupe for this very expensive eyeshadow palette, then please stay tuned. To test eyeshadow in the lab, I take a piece of filter paper, weigh it, then I get my NYX bending brush and I evenly coat the filter paper with the eyeshadow, then I weigh it again so I know exactly how much eyeshadow is on the filter paper, then I put it in a machine called a UV Viz spectrometer. And if you want to know how this works in more detail, I made a video about it and I'll link it up here and in the description box below. But essentially what it allows me to do is measure the exact colour of the eyeshadow so I can tell if two eyeshadows have the same pigment in them and it tells me how intense the colour is so I can tell which eyeshadow is more pigmented than the other ones. So in my last video where I compared these two eyeshadow palettes to one another I could split the eyeshadows into three different categories. Now the first category was where the eyeshadows were essentially the same as one another. They had the same amount of pigmentation to them and the colour was exactly the same. And I'll put a list somewhere, maybe here, uh, on the screen of what eyeshadows they were. The second category was where the colour was the same but the Anastasia Beverly Hills had more pigment in it when compared to the Makeup Revolution uh, palette. And then the third category was where they had different levels of pigmentation and the colours were slightly different. The first thing to address about the Wet n Wild palette is that there's only 10 shades in here when compared to 14 and there's 15 in the Makeup Revolution palette. So that means that there are some shades missing in this. So the first one that's missing is Vermeer. Now I really like this shade but I think it's because I'm quite pale and so it's quite a nice inner corner highlight for me. It's more on the pink side so it suits me. Uh, but if you've got warm undertones then Primavera is going to do the same job for you. The second one that's missing is Venetian Red. Uh, so there's only one pinky colour in this palette. Now do you need both? Not really, but I prefer Venetian Red to Love Letter, although you could probably mix in a little bit of red uh, of red, the Red Ochre Dupe to this and get something that looks a little bit more like Venetian Red. The third one that's missing is uh, Golden Ochre. Now, I don't miss this at all. I barely use it. I think I used it a little bit at the beginning when I was still learning to blend better. But um, since I'm more pink in my undertone, I don't need a yellowy colour to set my lid. Um, so I don't really miss it, it depends what you like. And then the third one that's missing is Burnt Orange, because you can see in this palette, there's only one of these uh, sort of orangey browny uh, transition shades. So there are a few shades missing. I don't think it takes away from the palette very much. The important shades, the shades that everybody loves, are still in here. So now let's look at the remaining shades in this palette and the three different categories that I use to describe the comparison between the Makeup Revolution and the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. So the first category were shadows where they were essentially identical to one another. Now, for this palette, this is still true for Bon Fresco, Tempera, uh, and um, the Raw Sienna dupe. It's interesting to know that um, this is much closer to Raw Sienna than it is to Burnt Orange, but again, 
you know, they're transition shades, you probably won't notice the slight difference in colour between Burnt Orange and Brawl Sienna. I don't think that you need all of them. The two surprising ones from this palette when compared to the other two is that Primavera and Warm Taupe were identical in the Makeup Revolution and Anastasia Beverly Hills palette, but they've actually got twice as much pigment in this one. So the Wet n Wild is more pigmented than both of them. Um, you probably won't notice it with the Warm Taupe dupe because it's actually pressed quite hard and you have to work quite hard to get powder out of it. So it'll probably perform exactly the same as the other two. And well, this is just a great shimmer and it is the best out of all of the three palettes. The second category were shadows where the colour was still the same in these two palettes, but uh, there was more pigment in the Anastasia Beverly Hills compared to the Makeup Revolution palette. Now, this was pretty much the same in this palette. Antique Bronze, this guy had the same colour and had the same amount of pigment as this, so still less than the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. And the same for Rialga and Cypress Umbra. But importantly, there was more pigment in the make, uh, in the Wet n Wild one compared to the Makeup Revolution. So if you, if you had to rank them, this one had the most pigment for those three shadows, then this one had the next most pigment, and then the Makeup Revolution had the least pigment. So now the final category, and this was where there was actually a difference in the pigment that's used in the Anastasia Beverly Hills compared to the Makeup Revolution palette. Now, this is because Anastasia Beverly Hills is not vegan. They use a red pigment uh, called Carmine, which is made from crushed up bugs. Um, I'm not bothered about that, but I know that some people are. Uh, and so they use Red 40, I think they use in, in this palette. Um, which is a very common uh, replacement for uh, vegan palettes. But what I found is that the, the Makeup Revolution one, it's just far pinker um, than, than in the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. And this one is like, it's kind of got little purple undertones to it. And I prefer it as a color, but it is a personal preference. Now, Wet n Wild do use Carmine. So, they don't have Venetian Red, as we talked about earlier, but their Love Letter dupe and their Red Ochre dupe were almost bang on for the uh, Modern Renaissance palette. Slightly less pigment in here, but I just don't think that you would notice uh, the difference between uh, these two palettes unless you were absolutely desperate to have Venetian Red. Bringing this all together, I would say if you can afford it, go with the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. A lot of love and care goes into making these palettes and for the majority of the shades, there is more pigment in these guys, especially in the darker colors uh, where it really does matter what the pigmentation level is. If it is out of your price range uh, and you can cope with there being a few missing shades or you're not bothered about the shades that are missing, uh, then I would go with the Wet n Wild palette. It, um, sometimes has more pigment than the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette with the warm taupe and the Primavera dupe. Um, it's, uh, and where it does have less pigment than the Anastasia Beverly Hills, it has more pigment than the Makeup Revolution palette. And most importantly, these red shades, which the Modern Renaissance is really famous for having, it was I mean, it seems silly now because there's so much colour in palettes, but it was really exciting at the time when it was released uh, to have these uh, bold pink colours in it. So I think Wet n Wild did a really great job on this. It's a really great palette. If you've been holding out on the Modern Renaissance because you can't afford it, definitely go with this one. However, if you are a vegan and you don't want to buy something with Carmine in, or if you really like Vermeer like me, you know, I would kind of be tempted to get this because I do really like uh, that Vermeer colour, um, then go for the Makeup Revolution one. So they've all got their pros, they've all got their cons, and I'm hoping that with all the nerdiness that I've done, uh, you can decide which one suits you best. Just a quick note before I go, I have just moved from Edinburgh to London and so that's why I haven't been able to film, I've been living out of bags for a little while and so I'm just set up now so I'm hoping to get back into the swing of things. 
The next palette that I, palettes that I was going to compare to each other is some of the more colourful palettes that I have, uh, including the Mani MUA Life's a Drag palette, and I've got the Sample Beauty palette, and then the Morphe 40, 35B palette. Uh, I tested those, and then I also tested uh, Soft Glam, um, the Anastasia Beverly Hills version and the Makeup Revolution version. Um, uh, but let me know if there's any other palettes that you would like to like me to test. I need to do some setting up uh, to be able to run any more lab tests um, while I'm in London. Uh, but definitely let me know what you want to see and I will do my best. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you learned something and I hope it helps you make smart choices when you're buying makeup in the future. Lots of love and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!